Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another weekly market chat of Hobby. And uh, today, uh, um, uh, we are very pleased to have uh, Dr. Geoffrey uh, from Ontology to join our um, weekly market chat. And uh, today, me, Johnny, and Dave will be hosting with Dr. Geoffrey about. Uh, we'll go. We'll talk about. I will we'll discuss uh, Web3 identity, and also we'll talk about uh, what Ontology do, what what Ontology does, and also some Web3 decentralized ident identity issues. And probably we are going to learn a lot from Dr. Geoffrey and and, and also explore other important uh, topics about uh, Web3 identity. So. Uh, well, without further ado, uh, I would like to invite Ms. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey to introduce yourself so our audience can know you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Johnny. Uh, so I'm Jeff. I, I harbinger ontology, so I help communicate what ontology does, what, what we stand for, but not in a one-directional sense, in, in a two-directional sense in terms of communicating with the community and that's the community at large so that could be partners that could be people such as yourselves and also hearing what they think and communicating back to design back to marketing back to all sorts of people so making sure that there's a good relationship working in both directions essentially is what i do yeah thank you uh, dr Geoffrey. um so uh i think they will have some questions that uh, will guide us through the discussion dave would you kickstart our conversation? Great, great. Thanks, Johnny. So, um, Jeffrey, um, what's ontology? Like a short introduction about that, and you know, um, what's the um? Do you have a roadmap for a year? So, ontology at the very basic level is uh, a public blockchain, right? So, like like lots of public blockchains, will tell you things like we're a little bit quicker we're a little bit cheaper and, and, and all the things you'll hear from public blockchain. And I, I think that's great. And I think there's space for lots of different blockchains. I, I think the future of Web3 is cross-chain. I think it's multiple chains working together. I think it's people specializing in things. And so kind of linked to the roadmap, I guess, one of the things that I think is really important is the position of ontology this year moving forward. And, and one of the key things I think, which is really important. If, if I could sum up the roadmap in, in a simple way, it's, it's the removal of barriers. And that's the removal of barriers for developers, it's the removal of barriers for users. And so one of the things I think that we are pushing out, we're pushing forward, is this idea of what we're calling um, the Ontology Web3 Network, or slightly longer version, Ontology Web3 Network Infrastructure. And it's the idea that ontology doesn't just provide a solution of a blockchain anymore. It's not just providing that for you to build on. It also provides protocols to make development easier. You know, we've recently open sourced some of our SDKs and then we make lots of different protocols. I can talk in a little bit more depth about later available for developers to cut down their development time to make their development cheaper, to just to just take it out of the box and put it into their dApps that they put together. And then the final part of that infrastructure is actually access, making access to Web3 easier, making it as easy as possible for users as well. And so really the, the, the current roadmap is making sure that infrastructure is in place and making sure that people who want to build with that infrastructure have got the support they need to build with that infrastructure. So, so moving on from just being a blockchain, but being a blockchain that specializes in identity, specializes in data, in decentralized identity and data, self-sovereign decentralized identity and data, and putting the protocols and access solutions in there for people, as well as the blockchain. Cool, cool. So we'll be expecting a lot of stuff, you know, coming with Ontology this year. I, you know, I really love about the decentralized, you know, identity, about, you know, the ontology network, you know, coming soon, coming this year, with also the developers, like you said. So, um, um basically, uh, what is, you know, sort of like decentralized identity to you? Do you have a definition? And sort of like, how do you, you know, adopt, you know, better or promote the um, adoption of so-called the um, ontology network, uh, you know, with the adoption of decentralized identity? 
Yeah, so first of all, decentralized identity, what is it? I think is a really important question because I, I think sometimes it get mixed, gets mixed up of, of what it actually is. And I think it can be lots of different things. So if you take, let's take it and look from an ontology standpoint, right? We have our de decentralized identity solution. I'm going to start calling this DID soon. My tongue keeps getting twisted up in it. <laughs> our DID solution um, is ontid. So we have ontid, which is the central solution for DID. But then built within that are lots of solutions that incorporate DID into it. So DID just means that no central organization holds all that data on you. Nobody's collecting it all, your age, your job, your health, your doctor's appointment. Actually, the only person who owns full access to that is yourself. And you, you're the person who can choose which parts of that you share with other people. And so there are a couple of products built around DID for ontology that are really important. And you know, you've got something called Ont Login, which is a, a passwordless login solution. So the idea that you can use your Ont ID to log into things without the need for passwords, without the need for sharing lots of details. There's Ont Tag, which uh, can be used to monitor lots of information and and actually keep track of certain things. Can be used in things like KYC and things. You've got a protocol called Mercury, which is about peer-to-peer -peer communication to make sure that different aspects of Web3 and maybe even Web2 can communicate with each other in a proper manner and in a safe, secure manner. You then got uh, things like uh, O-score, which is credit scoring. So making sure you've got decentralized credit scoring. You've got things like Orange Protocol, which is... Um, sort of reputation mapping in a decentralized way. And then you've got things like pod, which is decentralized data. Now, it's, you might think, well, that's not all DID, but it's all linked to this idea of DID. It's all linked to the idea that you can pull everything back to somebody's own ownership of something, to it being self-sovereign to that person. You can't achieve any of those things. You can't achieve credit scoring unless you have you can't achieve decentralized credit scoring unless you have a decentralized identity underpinning it. You can't achieve logins without passwords, not properly, unless you have a decentralized identity underpinning it. So whilst DID simplistically is you owning your own identity away from central organization and being able to share parts of that identity, but not necessarily having to share it all, in a more complex way, it opens up lots of opportunity to have things like decentralized data, decentralized credit scoring, decentralized um, KYCs, and such things like that. And so I think it plays a crucial role around those areas. Second part of your question, Dave, was um, asking about how do we bring that forward to people? How do we how do we how do we get that working? How do we spread the use of decentralized identity around? And, and I, I think there's a couple of answers to this. First and foremost, you know, obviously, I'm going to plug here. Uh, we, we have our uh, Ontology EVM fund, $10 million worth of uh, ONG, ONT to fund projects who want to build using uh, our ONTID solutions, using Ontology EVM, um, and actually build projects on there. So we, we're actually wanting to fund people to get involved and build on Ontology and use Ont ID in a, in a genuine manner, but also, you know, I mentioned earlier, we made our uh, verifiable credential SDK open source to say to people, do you know what we've got? Verifiable credentials, we've got the software development kits for you to use, use them, you know, get on it, get building, show us what you can do. And then on top of that, we're, we're, we're big believers in cross chain, right? So the, the ID solutions, aren't just for ontology chain, we, we provide them for cross-chain solutions. We, we, we don't believe in a single chain solution. You know, so we, we put that out there and allow people, if you're a project building on um, BMB, you know what, use DIR, our ontid solutions, use our SDKs and, and build solutions on BMB, that's fine. Let's just get it built. And so I, I think that's how you push DID out there. Again, I, I mentioned barriers, I mentioned obstacles earlier. It's removing barriers for developers, making it as easy for, for people to develop, 
offering financial support, marketing support, technical support, community support, and, and just making sure it's easy for people to integrate these things into the things they build. I think that's, we're still in that stage of Web3. We're still in the building stage, which means you have to make it easy for people. You have to provide reliable, cheap, accessible infrastructure for them. And I think that's what you do. And that's what we're doing at Ontology. Yeah, awesome. So that's also why I love, you know, Ontology. And we, um, you know, Hobby Research also published an article. You know, you talk about, you know, the, you know, we're three million and we especially, you know, on the um, decentralized identity, we, you know, we love about, we love about um, sort of like, you know, ontology with overscoring, like, you know, with the um, in the infrastructure of decentralized identity, then the, you know, ontology that builds, you know, like decentralized credit scoring, like thing is, I really love about, you know, it's, it's decentralized. You know, so we already have, you know, sort of like Web2 or centralized part of the credit scoring and stuff and data and stuff, but um, we sort of, you know, have relatively or comparatively, you know, less sort of like, um, you know, aspects or level of quality of the uh, privacy. So, um, so, um, John, do you have any opinions on... Yeah, you know, yeah actually, uh, I, I, I have a question for Dr. Geoffrey. Uh, actually, I came, came across the, uh, the latest development. Uh, that there is actually a, an interesting uh, development uh, using your uh, blockchain. Uh, that's the Daimler, uh, the automotive uh, brand. And actually, I'm, I'm, about, I'm a, bit, a little bit curious about uh, how it actually... Uh, just uh, use the blockchain to 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 enhance their business and also to 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 build their, their this business model. I, I see they, they have something incorporated into into this new model. They have the uh, vehicle identification, data sharing, and also some payments and settlements. Actually, how how do they work together? Well, I think I think the key element from an ontology point of view on there is is this idea of. You, you've got an immutable blockchain, right? So when it comes to ownership, when it comes to um, servicing, when it comes to all sorts of things, immutable, immutable blockchains play a crucial role in those sorts of things. The idea that you can't just change history, that, that becomes very important with ownership of anything. It becomes important with ownership of cars. Um, but also, um, I think it's also important if you... Like anything, right? When we all do it, if you're if you're going to put lots of your information in somewhere for an easy user experience, you know, we, we do it. I do it with Facebook. I do it with Google. You know, if I can just put my details in and then share those details with anybody, if they just give me a service I want and make it easy for me to log in, I, I do. But, you know, we, we also know the dangers of that around password breaches, login breaches, data breaches and so on. And I think the other thing that blockchain technology brings to those sorts of solutions, like the Daimler solution, is, is security. It is, you know, you, you own that data. You don't hand it over to whoever it is. It can be Daimler. It could be anybody. You don't hand over all that data. You, you have it. You, you keep it. And so there's a security element and a privacy element to that as well. And I think companies outside of Web3, real world companies, are starting to realize that there's a huge legal incentive to protecting data. That's the first thing. But also customers want it. Customers want to know that their data is safe and it's protected. They want to know when they sign up something, it's easy. But also um, that the immutability of blockchains, I think, plays a crucial role in those sorts of partnerships. Being able to say, if you've got data on the chain, it's real data. It's not been tampered with. It's not been changed. You think about that across all sorts of real life products. You know, if, if, you, if you go and buy a car, and I'm not saying this is a, a direct use case from ontology, but think about this. If you go and buy a car, you want to know that the service uh, record is correct. You want to know that the parts that have been used on that car for any replacements is correct and it's not been changed. And I think that's a crucial role moving forward, that blockchain technology identity as well. Because remember, identity doesn't just have to apply to a person. It can apply to a car. And so you've got that identity of a car you've got the identity of the parts and so when you're buying a used car or something you've got some security to know that what it's saying it is the services it says it's had the parts it says it's had fitted hasn't been changed and i think that's the kind of role that this can be 
um, implemented going forward as well. But on the Daimler idea, I think it's much more about um, managing personal identity in a secure way so that people can interact with their car in a fast, quick, easy way without the risk of being compromised. Yeah, thank you, Jeffrey. I, I, yeah, that's great. The data privacy and social security, you know, plays an important role when it comes to, you know, purchasing secondary, uh, purchasing a car for me from the secondary market. Yeah, especially I, I can relate to when I purchase car as a, a used car, and then I usually check the mileage and also any damaged part, repair part. And I think all of this data can be, you know, stored on a blockchain, and and it's actually mutable, and you know, it and actually ensures customers. Um, um, actually ensures a, 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 a what, what do I, how do I say that? It's actually a kind of uh, a safety safety net, or I would say a a guarantee, a guarantee for a customer to check and verify the parts that they are purchasing with 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 the, with, with the product, and that's really great about that. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think we'll see these sort of solutions spread out further and further. Yeah, you know, it's one of the things I think you know. Web3 has to find its way into the real world. It has to. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I really like the idea of, you know, uh, having an identity of the car. So I, I own a Tesla and nobody said I don't own it. I just own a Tesla. So like uh, I have something funny in my mind. So um, like if I saw if I have a, a wife or a girlfriend, so I would just, you know, <laughs> use just to decentralize identity to, to say I own it. You know, I own a girl. And then if I have like so two wives, I have two. You wanna check identity. how many exes your girlfriend had, right? No, no, man. So um, you know, it's just funny part of the um, you know, I did get that. So like um, most of like products or or items or you know physical stuff or products or items that I you think that is the most important to have a decentralized identity, like a car or like a real estate or stuff? What do you think? Well, I think there's lots of things happening out there. So we have a partnership with Rocky who do NFT music type things, you know, and, and identity on ownership of things like NFTs, whether it be music, whether it be uh, profile pictures, whether it be real estate or anything. The, the, all of that needs understanding around ownership. It needs some sort of identity attached to it. So who is the creator? The creator economy is going to be huge. It's already huge, right? We know this. The creator economy is a huge marketplace. It's a huge source of business and uh, economic activity. Currently, that, that is absolutely tied up in big tech, right? It's, it's not really owned by creators themselves. I think they get a bit of a, a bad deal, whether it be on TikTok or uh, actual music people producing real life music or artists producing real life art. I, I think the creator economy, the, uh, economy gets a bit of a bomb deal in Web2. Identity around that so that they actually can identify themselves properly as the creator of things, as the ownership of things alongside other developments in Web3, I think is going to be absolutely crucial. So I think in part, not necessarily my favorite part, not my most exciting part, but I think it might be the biggest part going forward is, is this idea of creators being able to identify themselves properly in a secure way, and then actually themselves be the people who benefit from what they create. I think that's part of it. And then, then you've got the obvious ones, like whether it be luxury goods, wine imports, whiskey import. I'm thinking about my own preferences here. Um, but, you know, all those sorts of things, anything that can be faked, anything that can be bootlegged, I think there's a real importance for identity of those away from people. But also people, I mean, let's face it, one, one of the famous examples that gets put about, and I think it works really well, is that there are lots of things about your own identity that could lead to discrimination. It could be some disability that you don't want to share with people. Currently, when we share identity, we share pretty much everything all at once. You know, if you if you want to share some identity to get um, a driver's license, you might only need to share parts of your identity. But what tends to happen is you sign up to share all your identity. If you want to buy a bottle of beer and you need to be 18 or 21, depending where you are, 
you know, you, you have shared lots of your identity, you and your identity over, it's got your age, it might have your address, it might have your full name, it might have your, um, it could, could have all sorts of your passport number on it or anything. And actually all you need to do is prove your age. You don't need them to have any more forms of identity from you, just your age. And I think one of the things DID does really well is it gives you that control. It says, do you know what? There are elements of my identity I don't want to share with you and I don't need to share with you. And so I can share in a secure way just the bits you need. That has huge implications, whether it be politically, around insurance, around finance, around relationships for Dave. You know, it could be all sorts of things. And I think that is also going to be a big use around securing privacy. So lots of things from people to products to uh, the creator economy to luxury goods. I, I think it will end up being pretty much across the board. Wow, awesome. So I like the idea, you know, of, you know, inviting wines, you know, have the identities on, you know, so what kind of wines I'm drinking and stuff. So like, um, so, but, um, you know, for us sort of like takeaways for our audience. So uh, would you like to get us through, you know, how do I set up or how do I own a, a DID on the ontology chain? Yeah, and um, you know, I'm, I'm risking sounding like a British politician here, but I am British, so that's maybe okay, because I'm going to keep repeating the same things. It's, it, again, with a focus on accessibility, with a focus on removing barriers. I, I spoke a little bit earlier about the uh, ontology Web3 network, own infrastructure, OWN. And part of that infrastructure, I mentioned the protocols. So, you know, all the different things you can just plug into what you build. The final part of that is making it accessible to users. And so we have the Onto wallet. And this is our wallet that is cross-chain, over 500 dApps on there, all the nice things, all the good stuff. You can do loads of competitions. But to answer your question, OntoID is your built into the Onto wallet. So when you set up your Onto wallet with your, um, you set up your address, and so you have to set it up with ont id straight in there and it's literally just a few clicks and all of a sudden you're on id you've got to you know you, you can do more things with it down the line but setting it up is literally as easy as downloading onto a wallet and, and clicking through setting it up as ont id and and we, we've done it that way accessibility is going to be everything the tech for web3 you know and I, I'm sure you probably agree, the tech for Web3 is pretty much there. This is no longer a tech problem. It, it's much more of a user interface problem, um, making it easy for people to get involved problem, making it accessible to the general public problem, more than a tech problem, I think. So on, Onto Wallet is our solution to that. And, and it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It does a lot of things and it does on ID out of the box really easily. Awesome, awesome. So I also downloaded it, you know, the you know, OMT wallet. So I'm setting up a, you know, sort of like a decentralized ID on your right down con. So um, I think it's pretty convenient, you know. So like um, I also saw like a farm of decentralized identity with some sort of like URL and stuff, you know, on the wallet. So, um, um, speaking about you know privacy, I think that's the um concern for the um audience or the, some takeaways for our audience that um how exactly you know uh, ontology as a decentralized blockchain um you know fight against uh, censorship censorship on the um uh, decentralized identity. I mean that's a that's a it's a huge question. I like the question, but it's a really big one. I mean. These, these last weeks, I think, for anybody interested in privacy, anybody interested in censorship, these last few weeks have been slightly demoralizing. I, I don't want to bring the tone down too much, but it's been slightly demoralizing. We, I, think, I think many people have had a big wake-up call that the reach of governments is pretty long, right? If they decide they want to do something, they're pretty good at getting it done. Right. We saw it with, uh, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but we saw it with Tornado Cash. We've seen um, some of the talk around Ethereum and interfering with nodes and so on. Um, I, I think, I'll be honest, I'll be honest, and, and 
this is a really bad sales pitch. I think everybody's a mile away from de- uh, from censorship resistant. I think people are so far away from censorship resistant. And, and I think most people don't fully realize it. I, don't, I think people potentially underestimate the reach of governments. That said, that said, I do think the key to building a future of censorship resistance is privacy and it is Web3. And so I think what ontology is doing is, is putting the infrastructure there where I mentioned creator economies earlier, where we take the power away from centralized tech companies, where we take it away from centralized industries and we put it on a decentralized nature. That's no guarantee we're seeing that. That's no guarantee of censorship resistance. But I think it's a step in the right direction. I think it stops censorship from being as easy as it currently is. And I also think privacy is also part of censorship resistance. But if you can keep parts of your identity to yourself, if you can keep, if you don't have to share as much as you currently do, if you can just share as much as you want to, I think that helps keep you away from censorship in some respects, because you it, it stops people getting the reasons that they might choose to censorship, censor you. You know, let's say it's for political reasons or personal reasons, or, or they just don't like your reasons, right? If you don't have to share as much as your identity as you currently do, then potentially you're more censor resistant. Um, but I think we've got a long way to go. And I think I think we have to build, I think we have to go back to realizing why decentralization was important. I think sometimes we lose the sight of that amongst all the hype of Web3, amongst all the excitement. Mm-hmm. your sense of issue like um you know i would like to bring about you know the um you know if i'm not problems so sort of like um you know so like uh there are a lot of you know loan notes for the if if you're you know proof of stake um in the u.s so when they um you know have the uh um you know um hand down from the government so vitalik also traded on the um sort of like um trader said that uh just you know vanish the note or just get gone off the note uh, you know, if they are, you know, uh, cooperating or sort of like, um, not cooperating, but sort of like, um, they're being hunted down by the government. So I think I'm not sure about, uh, how things will go or whether it's going to be beneficial or I think there, there is going to be more uncertainty on, you know, that. So I think that, uh, the layer of privacy and decentralized identity, you know, with privacy driven solution is really the key. It's really the um, you know essential element to the adoption of Rafi, you know. So um, like um, but apart from that, so uh, people also like about um, uh, if there's sort of like any investment gains or any sort of like um, you know, demand on the token. So would you like to uh, explain the tokenomics of the ONT token and if uh it's possible and uh, if there are any use cases for the ONT token? Yeah, so, I mean, and first and foremost, Ontology is a dual token system. So for people who are familiar with NEO, for instance, it's a very similar system to the NEO system. And I I think there are a lot of advantages with dual token systems. So the Ontology token serves just two purposes, really nice and simple. One, it's got a governance purpose. So nodes do get the chance to vote on governance. And so when you... um, stake your ONT into a node, you're, you're allowing that node to represent you on, on in, in governance procedures. And, and also the second part, which I think is really important, it, it is a staking token. So you, you put it in the network, you secure the network with proof of stake, and then you generate rewards from that node. Um, currently, part of that is from the emission schedule still on Ontology Gas, the ONG token but also for transactions on chain. So part of those transaction fees go back to stakers. 
And then the flip side of the ONT token is the ONG token, the ontology gas token. And that is the gas token. That powers all transactions. And, and the utility of that is, again, really nice. I love simple solutions. I love simple utility. I think we, you know, at the moment we, we exist where some of the utilities get quite convoluted and complex. And I'm quite simple. I like simple solutions. So ontology gas just powers your transactions. You pay in ontology gas. Now, let's say, let's give, let's give you an idea on this. Let's say you're um, setting up a, a big DAP, a big protocol, and you decide to launch ton ontology. And so you've got all these transactions. You've got lots of things you can do. You can open your own node with ONT. And that node will generate lots of ONG. You could use that ONG for incentives for your users. You could have free gas incentives by airdropping ONG to them. You could use it to power your own transactions. So if you're doing, you know, if, you, if you're using it to track all your luxury whiskey that I'm buying, right? Or you've got Dave's 5,000 girlfriends on chain and you need to transact with them, right? You, you, Dave would probably open a node using ONT and get all the ONG there to pay for all these transactions on chain. Though essentially it turns out to be gasless. It turns out to be free transactions because you're just taking it from the node. And so they're the use cases of the dual token system. Nice and simple, it's nice and easy. And I think it benefits benefits builders and it benefits people who decide to stake on the node because they also take share of the fees. It gets back to what staking, I think, should be. Awesome, awesome. So the proof of stake system with the uh, use cases of you know, staking. And also, um, I really like the idea of, you know, the uh, dual token design. It's like, you know, if you um have only one token, so sort of like you pay in that token and you increase the circling supply by, you know, just paying token, you know, on the market. So, but, you know, ontology has a sort of like ONG, ontology gas, and that can, you know, reduce the, um, you know, supply, um, so sort of like in the S perspective of payment. So like, uh, you don't have to just dump, let's say just dump ONG token. You can just dump ONG for the payment and stick more, in, you know, for the ON, ONG, ON, yeah, ONT token. Yeah. So ONT for proof of stake and ONG for the gas. I really like, like about that. So, um, so like a bit for the takeaways for the data for our audience. So like, um, according to, you know, call my cap. Coinmarketcap.com. You know, dot com. So, uh, on ONT has a uh, total supply of you know so like uh, one billion, and now uh, it has you know uh, reported so like circling a supply of you know like um you know eight seventy five you know million ONT tokens. So eighty eight percent of the ONT is already on circling supply. So I think that uh, this is a great you know token design on the um you know on the great you know a large portion of the tokens are being rested already. On like eighty eight percent already on the circulating supply and you know, over the total supply. So uh, the key takeaway for the audience is, um, in my mind, it's like um, it has a you know little to go with the remaining inflation to my uh, understanding and analysis. So um, do you have um sort of like just like a, a you know sort of a hard question like do you have a um improvement scheme or like um, a token number 2.0 or ONT 2.0, you know, a plan for the ONT tokens to increase its utility, like, um, sort of like, um, chaining 2.0, sort of like, you know, cake 2.0. So do you have any plans? Um, do you know, what? it's, it's, it's all going to boil back to the same things. For me, for ontology, it's, um, it's real world application. I don't think we need to change the tokens. I don't think we need to change what ontology do. This year we opened, uh, you know, the, the, some of the big news was we put a, an office in Germany to put a European place there to really be at the forefront of DID discussions in Europe. You know, um, we, we, we're pushing lots of partnerships. We've got the 10 million fund, $10 million fund to try and get people building. We, we recently employed a new business development manager I, th I think ontology 2.0, if it did exist, is just use case, use case, use case, use case. It's taking it out into the world. It's making sure people know what we have and can build on it. I, I think some of the things that's going to be really interesting coming up, um, I was speaking to XDAO earlier today and did a Twitter spaces with them. They, they helped DAOs launch. DAOs are potentially the 
the next DeFi, if I can say that, in my view, DAOs are going to explode, right? DAOs are going to be really big. And, and I think DAOs need solutions around identity, reputation in particular, um, credit scoring as well. You know, when you're thinking about treasuries, you think about some of the things we've seen for DAOs this year. Look, I mean, crypto this year has been difficult for lots of reasons. There have been so many people that have proven to be untrustworthy, to be unsuitable for the positions they're in, to not have good designs in what they're trying to do. And, and that's happened in DAOs as well. And I think having reputation scoring, which is something Ontology provides, having credit scoring, which is something Ontology provides, protects users. And I think it's something people are going to have to put in. The, the short and maybe maybe not entirely satisfactory answer, Dave, is, is I think Ontology 2.0 is having an infrastructure that people use. You know, I, I think that I think I said it earlier, the technology is there. It's, it's now it's about making sure people know it's there, making sure that they know we're here to support them, not only with finance, although we do support them with finance, but with tech and media and all the other things. And we can get it integrated into people's project and make their project more secure, more decentralized, increase privacy, and give users a little bit more assurance that risk is being managed by people with good reputations. You know, you want somebody who's been in three or four DAOs, built up a great reputation, and then is heading up a new DAO. Do you know what? I could get behind that, but I need to see that reputation. And that's the sort of infrastructure we're building. And I, th I think that's where the real revenue ontology is going to be driven certainly certainly so uh, it's you know astonishing like reputation is really really hard stuff a uh, you know complex problem that uh, we always want to solve it and always we're always looking for you know sort of a seat round or range around or you know the real solution that's behind the fundamentals of that three you know so like speaking of reputation um i you know i read it you know, on the um the white paper, there is a sort of like old score that um facilitates the adoption of um sort of like patient scoring. So, would you like to explain more about um old score and how uh, ontology can promote or use uh, more on the uh, you know rep free reputation system? Yeah, so I, I'll touch on a couple of things. O score, I think, has got a really important role to play. So I think you mentioned Wing Finance earlier. Somebody mentioned Wing Finance earlier. And so O score can be used to collect your on-chain credit worthiness, what you've paid, what you've done, how you've interacted with things. And then that can open up things like under collateralized lending and things like that. So that's a kind of reputation that can allow you to do certain things. You could build a credit worthiness that in a DAO potentially could give you uh, a little bit better reputation for managing um, treasuries and so on. The other thing that's linked to ontology in there is something called Orange Protocol, and that is directly reputation. So that is monitoring your actions across DAOs, monitoring your actions across how you behave, how you vote, what you do, your interactions, how you've done certain things, and then producing a reputation score uh, on chain. And I think that's also really important. Something, something I, I mentioned earlier, I love DAOs. I'm a big believer in them. Something I really don't like, though, is, is the idea that whoever's got the most tokens gets the biggest voice, right? I, I have a real problem with it. I don't think it necessarily meet, leads to good decisions in DAOs. I don't think it necessarily leads to decisions that are good for the ecosystem, good for the most participants. I don't think it necessarily means people with the best skills are leading the conversation. And so something like Orange Protocol allowing for more reputation-based voting, reputation-based interactions, I think is the future. I think that's how we move towards DAOs where people feel engaged, where they feel their voice matters where they actually feel they can do something without some whale just coming in and overruling them. And so out of the box protocols that people can hook up to, O score in some respects, and then speaking to Orange Protocol in other respects to, to get that reputation pushed as well. Uh, and the solutions exist. Absolutely. So I'm um, the O score very important, you know, to for us to know more about the reputation of, you know, the behaviors of people, you know, like for, you know, 
from you know the year of you know 2018, 2019, you know until now, where I always told tell Johnny that you know, dude, no more rock pools, you know, always rock pools across all the protocols, you know. Uh, I'm on, you know, what we analyze, and you know, three years later, gone, you know, <laughs> like two years later, rock pool go to zero, <laughs> gone, you know. We're you know we're tired of that. The bad actors are not going to drive the really valuable, you know, or, or valuable or the real wealth of that, you know, rap free, you know, area. So like um I also wonder, you know, um what is the um you know would you like to explain more about the um um sustainable um revenue model of the um ontology? Yeah, so I, I think I'm going to give you very similar answers, I'm afraid, Dave. I think I think the sustainable revenue model is is the fact that we're an infrastructure product, right? This is this is my belief. I, I think when you build infrastructure, you build for sustainability. You, you because you build infrastructure that can be updated. Obviously, you build it that can be tweaked and 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 made more suitable for what's required at the time. But the thing with infrastructure is is we're in. We're in a growing Web3 environment. Forget the market, right? The market's crap. We all know it's crap. But Web3 isn't just the market. Web3 is more than just prices on a chart, right? Web3 Web is not going to disappear tomorrow. Crypto, I don't, you, you don't need to call it Web3. Blockchain, crypto, whatever you want to call it. It's not going anywhere. It's a growing product. It's going to get bigger. More and more people are going to get involved. It's going to figure out how to make real world interactions. It's going to figure out, hey, look, look, make a DAO. We're doing loans with a real life bank just the other day, right? It, this isn't going anywhere. And so what, what makes Ontology's revenue model stable and sustainable is that it's an infrastructure product. It gives you infrastructure across the blockchain to build on. It's cross-chain. It's not trying to win a blockchain race. It's cross-chain. It accepts that it's going to be cross-chain. It wants to deal with other chains. It's got protocols that you can just use out of the box to build on, and it's got an access porting onto a wallet. As Web3 gets bigger, as people wanting to deal on chain, wanting to get into the metaverse, or I don't know. I mean, next week we might be on Web10. Who knows? And But whatever people are doing, infrastructure is going to be the key to it. Good, reliable infrastructure. DID is going to be a part of it. Data management is going to be a part of it. And ontology are building those solutions. For me, that makes it sustainable. And, and there's no crazy um, vapor APRs, right? We've got a clear <laughs> tokenomics that says we are going to mint this many ONT. As you say, we're, what, 88% minted already? We, we, the, the tokenomics are really clear. It's not just only, you know, I, I'm not reaching into my back pocket and saying, oh, I'm going to add another 20% ONG for your rewards just to get you using it. You know, it, it's, it's, it's all down there. And then eventually from minting, uh, you'll get your rewards from transaction fees. You know, that, that, that for me is a sustainable model. Absolutely, I really love the idea of the very healthy intergenomic design. You know, so uh, so like you know when when we see so sort of like expat actors examples like uh, just saying you know, Luna. You no, know, so we we you know so some reports said that um you know, Bitcoin you know pre-minted you know sort of like one point six billion of Luna, but just, he just hides it you know in another way or another secret world and just you know just uh, some you know they. You know, just um, people just find it out. So, like, ontology is really like I really like the idea. You know, so well, and another, you know, again, take away for, for the audience is like eighty eight percent of the ONT token already minted on the market. So, less inflation. You know, only two twenty two percent of the remaining tokens are going to be arrested. But I think like to compare the one hundred percent or the you know uh, the limited supply or the maximum limited cap supply is like one billion. So. Little is going to little of the tokens are going to be arrested uh, on the market. So this is like um, one of the you know most healthy you know uh, healthiest tokenomic design I have ever seen on the um, on the market. So ontology also has also has you know a long history you know since like uh, twenty eighteen. So um so like it's still you know surviving and has a great you know development on the market. Right? ONT world map, like ONT number, and all the stuff, you know, um, across this year and keep developing. So I really, really like that on the tokenomic design and also the sustainability of the, uh, 
the um, um, ontology. So, um, um, if um, you know, so Jeffrey, yeah, if you you know, I ask you, what's the you know, the, what's the thing special about ontology? Uh, would you like to give me that you know thing or just promote that? Do you know? Do you know? I mean, obviously, I've covered all the things I think we do well in terms of the product of the protocol. But you know what? I, one of the things I'm really proud of that we've put together, and it's got better over the course of the last year, is just how well we deal with the community interactions. You know, we we have regular community calls. We we have. I've, I've never really seen a a, a, a blockchain product, a, a crypto company, listen and interact with its community quite as well as Ontology does. And I really like that. I think community builds in Web3 are really important. And, and I've seen that get better and better over the course last year, of this last year. And, and I think in a lot of respects, on top of the technology, on top of the solutions, that really stands as a part. Yeah. Um, to me, actually, I, 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 I also agree on you know, your, your point that uh, I think that one thing that's special about ontology is that it, it sticks to the ground. It has real utilization. And as you always mentioned, uh, simplicity, you know, is the core of this protocol. And it's actually what drives growth because with more utilization, I think the project will be sustainable and, you know, in a long, longer term, it has a healthier um, growth compared to other fancy and also Ponzi scheme. I think that makes a difference. Yeah. And yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, we will also actually, yeah, honestly, we will learn a lot from, from, you know, from you, Dr. Jeffrey about uh, the, yeah, the topics that we, dis we, we, we discussed, like, uh, so, like we, we, we also learned that uh, projects, uh, where free uh, is not just, you know, uh, some marketing or fancy, fancy stuff like that is actually, um evolving to uh a, a stage where now developers have to uh, have to you know to to work on user interface to allow you know people to use the blockchain and also use the technology that's something that i i want to sum it up yeah uh yeah so uh let me just um wrap it up quickly yeah, thank you, Dr. Jeffrey, for you know uh, having a very good conversation with me and Dave, and we really learned a lot from you and also about ontology. And yeah, thank you, Dr. Jeffrey. So uh, in the later part, we have a special advertisement about Hobby Global, and uh, it's actually a Hobby membership update for our exchange users, actually. Uh, we have been doing very well, you know, since 2013. We have a, a, a user base of now 25 million and we are expanding our, our businesses across the world. And uh, we have a lot of uh, benefits for our users. Like we have uh, new joiners, we work, Candy Drop, Prime Erm, Prime Box, a lot of things. And we now have an upgrade that we want to uh, benefit our users. We have the Prime membership. The Prime membership is actually an upgrade for our VIP member. So we're actually offering a lot of discounts and also benefits for our users. So first of all, you have the trade discount and also you have financing uh, products uh, that, that are coming ahead in uh, later. And then we also have more candy drop and also we will have more Prime list. So to sum it up, uh, these are the things that are coming for, you know, for the upgrade. Discount fee, trading fees discount, uh, report, industry report, quality token listing, exclusive fee discount, a lot of things. So make sure you stay tuned to uh, the Hobby Prime update. You can check it out uh, on, on the Hobby app and uh, we will update this, uh, this upgrade uh, at the end of uh, August and probably weeks later. So you better uh, stay tuned to the, up the upgrade and you can also learn, uh, just, ch just check out the, the upgrades about the new discounts and also new benefits that you can enjoy from upgrading to Prime membership. So thank you all for listening. And yeah, uh, thank you Dr. Jeffrey for you know having the very great conversation with us. And we learned a lot about the IDE, 
uh, ontology and also the good things about ontology and also the, a we have a good prospect of referee development and yeah uh yeah we want to thank you for good conversation yeah i hope you enjoyed it as well no i totally enjoyed it thank you for having me guys yeah yeah thank you jeffrey thank you yeah all right enjoy the rest of your day everybody yeah sure you too great enjoy see you see you jeffrey